ABC Sports presents the 1981 World Series. Live from Dodger Stadium, it's the Yankees against the Dodgers. Yesterday, game four, a key pinch hit home run by Jay Johnstone with a man on, brought the Dodgers back in the ball game. They had been trailing by three. A series of Yankee mistakes costly all over again, including one unfortunate occurrence, a pop fly to right field lost by Jackson in the sun. Finally, reliever Steve Howe came on to hold the fort, but just barely. That drive by Randolph just short. So it's game number five today. In Dodger Town, the fans are filled with a Dodger frenzy, and why not? Their team has come back to even. This ABC Sports presentation is being brought to you by Gillette Atra Reza. It pivots to continually adjust and hug every curve and contour of your face. Give it the pivot with Gillette Atra. By Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life. If you've got the time, we've got the beer by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. And by Seiko and your authorized Seiko dealer. This plaque is the sign you can trust to get the best of Seiko. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Dodger Stadium, game number five, the 1981 World Series. No need to embellish the drama. The first two games were characterized by some media people as dull, but now they're scrambling to retract. The last two games have been as exciting as can be. Good matchup today. Royce against Guidry may be a third straight wild game. In the meantime, we get ready now to go right down to the field and our public address announcer, Mr. John Rams. And now, to honor America, here to sing our national anthem is the star of the national company of Evita, currently in Los Angeles, Lonnie Ackerman, accompanied by Helen Dell at the Dodger Stadium, Hammond, Oregon. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the Ladies and gentlemen, the 23rd Olympiad will be held in Los Angeles in 1984, and amateur baseball will have its largest role ever in the Olympics as a demonstration sport with games to be played at Dodger Stadium. We are pleased to have with us today to throw the first ball, the president of the Los Angeles Olympic Organizing Committee, Peter Uberon. Accompanied by the official Olympic mascot, Sam the Eagle.
Peter Yovarathi, man in charge of getting things together for the Olympics to be held here in Los Angeles in 1984. Right now we're ready. Game five coming up. The Yankees and the Dodgers. Why is our front-wheel drive Chevy Citation such a hero with so many Americans? Let's ask Working Woman. With its five-passenger room, my Citation works like a little limousine for our company's clients. Except when it's working like a wagon with room for all our company samples. Citation works like a charm in traffic, and it works like... Thank you, Working Woman. But is there no room in your life for play? I'm working on it. Now get bigger savings on new 1981 Citations. We got them off. That means it's Miller time. Come on, I'm buying. Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life. If you've got the time, Miller's got the beer. All right, children. Who's going to be the first one to recite the alphabet? How about you, Ann? A, B. C, D, E, F, E, F, E, F, Hutton. When E, F, Hutton talks, people listen. Here's your chance to get the official 1981 World Series program, a collector's item commemorating the 78th Fall Classic. Send check or money order for $4 to World Series Program, Post Office Box 250, Hicksville, New York, 11802. Please make checks payable to World Series Program. New York residents must add appropriate sales tax. That's World Series Program, Box 250, Hicksville, New York. Allow eight weeks for delivery. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Starting lineup for the Yankees, leading off Willie Randolph, batting second, Larry Melbourne, Dave Winfield third, hoping to get started, and then the big man, Reggie Jackson. After him, the big man for the Yankees during the series, Bob Watson, then Lou Pinella in there today against the Southpaw, followed by Rick Cerrone, then Aurelio Rodriguez, Nettle still out, finally Ron Guidry. And for the Dodgers, defensively, Steve Garvey having a great series, 8 for 16 at first base. At second base, getting on track yesterday with a couple of hits and a couple of runs batted in. Davey Lopes, Bill Russell, the shortstop, drove in the tying run in the sixth inning yesterday. And Ron Say having a fine series. Friday night's hero at third. The outfield, it's Dusty Baker around and left trying to get on track. In center field today, the Dodgers go with yesterday's defensive replacement as a starter, Daryl Thomas and Pedro Guerrero in right. Getting the start is Steve Yeager starting for the fourth time in the five games and on the mound. The starter in game one Tuesday in New York Jerry Royce in game one Royce lasted only two and two thirds innings that was the earliest he was knocked out this season. So Jerry Royce long career and good success but pitching in the World Series for the first time started his career with the Cardinals went to Houston Pittsburgh and time called here Dusty Baker out in left field doing some house cleaning that is taken care of and we'll get underway with Willie Randolph to lead things off Randolph Milburn and Winfield Willie just two for ten in the series but he's really been a pest he's walked six times and reached on an error so he's been on base on nine occasions one another count check the umpires today American leaguer Rich Garcia back of the plate Dick Stello at first Larry Barnett at second and Nicolosi at third Cooney down the line and left Harvey down the line and right and Royce quickly falls behind to Randolph two and oh. Again, we have an American League umpire behind the plate with the inside protector. Royce is going to have to keep the ball down to get some strikes today. If you characterize Richie Garcia, he, what I would say, is a, is a hitter's umpire. He makes you throw strikes, and the hitters know that. Yeah. Shot foul. Two balls, two strikes to count. 
They talked about Friday's game being a twilight game, but as we pointed out in the third inning, the lights had full effect on Friday. This will be a twilight game. Of course, we went to standard time last night. You can see where the shadow is already, and a good part of the game will be played in the shade. Three and two. There you saw the high fastball. If there's anything that you would say that Royce did wrong in New York in the first game was get the ball up in the strike zone. Randolph on a check swing. Bounces down to Garvey. Shovels to Royce covering in time to get Randolph. One away in the first inning. And the man has shown up today. Yes, he has. Yesterday, Lasorda started to engage in some bad nosh with me. And I said, Frank, yeah? He said, no, he'll be here tomorrow. And I said, you mean Frank Torrey? <laughs> <laughs> Larry Milburn. Lasorda's office is like a Sinatra museum. Mm. And an Italian restaurant. <laughs> Larry Milburn. Four for 14 in the series. Little chopper down a Lopes who has to charge. Throw on the run. Get him. Two rounders to the right side and quickly two down in the first inning. And up comes the man trying to get on track, Dave Winfield. Here an easy play for Davey Lopes. High chopper. Milmore does not run as well from the right side. Two out and the base is empty. No score. This is the final game to be played here. Teams are off tomorrow. Game six, Tuesday in New York. Game seven, if necessary, Wednesday in New York. Dave Winfield not only 0 for 14 in the World Series, but he was hitless in the final game against Oakland in the American League Championship Series. So he's 0 for his last 19. <laughs> on one. The thing about Winfield, though, he is not really a weak 0 for 14 in this series. Had a couple of shots yesterday that just missed going out. Well, well he's developed warning track power. Everything goes to the warning track, but not over. That's a bad habit to have as a hitter. One and one. <laughs> He's got quite a seat. What is that? What is he doing up there? Back of the pavilion in right field. One way to get in. <laughs> They're sold out. Winfield yeah. fouling it away in the count. One and two. And there you saw the cut fastball Royce throws two. He throws one with the seams and runs away. And this is a fastball that sails in. He cuts it in on the right handed batters. Tough pitch to handle. And if you're Jerry Royce and you go back over the first game that you pitched in New York and you criticize the problems that you had, you'd say, number one, I got behind the hitters. Number two, all my pitches were up. And so far, you've seen Royce do just the opposite. He's getting ahead of the hitters with a one and two count on Winfield. Made a good pitch on Milbourne to jam him and get the easy roller to, to Lowe's. And he strikes Winfield out. So Jerry Royce with a quick one, two, three inning. Didn't see many of those yesterday after a half. It's the Yankees, nothing, and the Dodgers coming up. United announces great low prices on complete Hawaii vacation packages. Prices that bring Hawaii closer from the East Coast, closer from the Midwest, closer from every city United serves. United. Once in a lifetime prices for a once in a lifetime vacation. Sometimes it feels as though I've been standing in line my whole life. When everybody has to wait in line for one copy machine, what's your real cost of copying? For the whole cost of standing in line for one central copier, you can own 3M's whole line of outstanding copiers, and you can put them where you need them. This little bit of enlightenment has been brought to you by 3M Company. Starting lineup for the Dodgers, the Catalyst. Being that again, Davey Lopes. Then Bill Russell, a big man yesterday. Steve Garvey, a big man throughout the series. Ron Say, the cleanup man, and a big man. Dusty Baker still struggling. Pedro Guerrero, always dangerous. Steve Yeager, who's been a stick out throughout the series. Daryl Thomas, the versatile one. And finally, Jerry Royce, the pitcher. And quickly, the Yankee defense, Bob Watson at first base. He's been there for all five games. At second is Willie Randolph. 
The Yankee shortstop in place of the injured Bucky Dent doing a fine job in postseason. Larry Milburn again Aurelio Rodriguez at third with medals out. In the outfield today Lou Pinella gets the start against the left hander in left field. In center field Dave Winfield who started there yesterday and around and right Reggie Reggie Reggie. Back of the plate for the Yankees Rick Cerrone and the pitcher Ron Guidry pitched well in game number one giving up just one run four hits and seven innings of work. Gossage picked up the save in game one on Tuesday. Ron's career World Series record is three and zero oh with a one point four four ERA all of his starts against the Dodgers. No score bottom of the first inning. Davey Lopes the batter looks at a strike. Lopes two hits yesterday drove in two runs and scored a couple. They talk about Lopes retiring maybe even at the end of this season. Doubtful. The guy still makes the big plays. The real catalyst of the club. And there you saw the Ron Guidry slider to run the count in one and two. That is the pitch that the Dodgers are going to have to have the most difficult difficulty with today. If they lay off the bad ones they're going to get Guidry to throw his fastball away. Throws exceptionally hard around 92 miles per hour the first game in New York. And down goes Lopes. So Guidry starts with a strikeout. One away in the first inning. He has a remarkable record, Al, for not giving up a run in the first inning of a ball game. It's hard to remember when that happened. Last. It's interesting. Some pitchers are that way. Others try to rectify early inning jitters by altering and changing constantly their warm-up routines. Russell popping it up. Third baseman Rodriguez is there and makes the catch. What Gidry ought to do, Jim, is patent whatever his warm-up routine is. He's obviously ready every time he comes out of the bullpen to the mound. Well, that's true. You see a lot of guys go out there maybe 10 minutes early because they have trouble in the early innings, and it's the most difficult time. You just don't know what you have. You're not used to the mound. And, Jim, he has not given up an earned run in the first inning in this entire season. Well, that's an amazing statistic. It's hard to believe. Steve Garvey, eight hits in 16 trips in the series, and also a couple of very loud outs. 283 during the regular season. Going inside. The leaders, minimum 60 at bats. Lou Brock, 391 career average. Reggie number two, Garvey number five. Garvey hits it in the air to right center field. Winfield coming in, but they'll have to play it on. Garvey is aboard with a base hit. He keeps doing it. Interestingly, though, he was batting 500 in the series when he went up to the plate then. He's seven for nine with the bases empty. He's only one for seven with runners on base. That yesterday's infield single. But he's on base. And he's now hit safely in 17 of his last 18 games. Well, I would say there's probably a reason for why he hits better when there's nobody on is that the pitcher probably doesn't bear down as much there you have a one and oh count he doesn't want to get behind him and he gave him a pitch to hit he didn't hit it very hard but he's strong enough when Gidry got the ball in to fight it off even though he did loop it into center field for a base hit one ball no strikes the count on Ron say say a three run homer in the first inning on Friday night. Two games here have been wild. Well, they have, and, and the ballpark has a lot to do with it. And Ronnie Say was saying that he really feels the ball is carrying as well as it is because of the unusually warm weather they've had out here in Los Angeles. Check swing, appeal at first, and they get the call from Dick Stello. First base umpire said yes, it's a strike. You judge. And here you see a 1 0 slider. Say is not just looking for a good pitch to hit, doesn't want to swing at a bad one, really can't stop his swing. Garvey at first base. 1-1 one, one pitch is hot foul. Back out of play. And the count one and two. Another warm day. Temperature in the mid-70s at Dodger Stadium. Look around Dodger Stadium. And you can see where the shadows are right now, and they will extend out toward the playing field as we go along. 
Very shortly they'll be between the mound and the plate. One two pitch on the way is fouled back. You know what's interesting Jim we talk so much about games in the shade and the problems that hitters have. What people don't often talk about umpires oftentimes have problems seeing the ball in the shade. Well it does and I think yesterday uh, both sides talking to the players felt that Doug Harvey missed a lot of pitches and uh, under no circumstances am I saying he's a bad umpire but because umpires have games like that as pitchers have four games and hitters also but they felt a lot of pitches should have been strikes on both sides were called balls and a lot of times the umpire has the same problem the hitter does he, he can't pick up the spin on the ball and it's a reaction type game the hitters up there trying to react on a 90 mile per hour fastball the umpire is supposed to be perfect and get better as he goes along it's a very tough job. Two two pitches low to the count is full on Ross Say and the two down we'll see Garvey moving with the pitch from first base. And here's the big difference between Yankee Stadium and Dodger Stadium. Gidry in New York when he gets it three two counter behind the hitter can throw his fastball out over the plate and let him hit it to that large air territory in left and center here. Those fly balls can be home runs. You got to be a little bit finer. You have to make a little bit better pitch and that sometimes leaves the base on balls. Watson back on the bag after starting to move behind Garvey. Steve will be going with the pitch with a count three and two. The reason for that is they don't want him to get a big jump. And if Garvey would, excuse me, if say, uh, say would double, he might score from first. Three two pitch to say is shot foul. What was it George Steinbrenner said to me on sports beat we're playing on a ping pong team. <laughs> well Ronnie Sakes said he's complained about this infield for years and it takes two games where you have unusual strange irregular type hops to really prove that. Now it, they've kind of been advantageous to the Dodgers but they could have worked both ways they just have, haven't seen to as of yet. 3 2 pitch is ball four. Runners at first and second with two down in the first inning. So, Gidry having first inning troubles. It's not been scored on yet, but it may be the beginning of a change of pattern for him. Remember, Gidry has not been. There's George Steinbrenner. Patton and pinstripes. He has not been. Uh, Gidry the steady pitcher that he was for the better part of the season for the last four to five weeks. Ron working on Baker Dusty trying to shake a slump looks at a strike Baker just two for 15 in the World Series and he was hitless in his last four at bats in the National League Championship Series two for his last 19 overall. One and one the count. No score, bottom of the first inning, two out, Garvey at second, and say at first. I think the big advantage Gidry had in the first ball game is when he went out there the second time in the second inning, he had a, a big lead. Watson's three run home run gave him a cushion. Baker lining it to left field. Pinella coming on, makes the catch despite staggering. Lou starting to fall down, goes to his knees, and makes the play. Not a very good pitch in the middle of the plate. Baker hits it hard. But Pinella makes a fine play. May have had little problems with the stands. Here again, Lou has it all the way. And the inning is over. So the Dodgers go down, no runs a hit, leave a couple after one, no score. Marcus, I see Whisker. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Atra. Next time, Jose, give it the pivot. Atra. The Gillette Atra razor pivots to continually adjust and hug every curve, contour, and angle. No other razor shaves closer and more comfortably than Atra. I give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Atra. Give it the pivot with Gillette Atra. Where's my one step? What? What's happening? Nothing. This party's dead. Are you laughing? They're laughing at the hors d'oeuvres. Oh. I got it. And I broke so hard. Smile, everybody. Why is the party over? No, it just started. 
Hey, everybody looks happy. I thought cameras didn't lie. Polaroid One Step brings a dead party to life in seconds. More hors d'oeuvres, everybody. They're funnier than the pictures. Out! Everybody out! Polaroid means fun. With a One Step. Oh, Mr. Goodwrench. Can I get a tuna? Sure can. What's that? Your written estimate. Mr. Goodwrench wants you to know in advance just about how much the job will cost. He has the GM training and tools available to do the job right. Gee, that's reasonable. Mr. Goodwrench knows our customers don't like surprises. Keep that great GM feeling. Where Mr. Goodwrench works. With genuine GM hearts. Al Michaels with Howard Cosell and Jim Palmer. We go to the second inning at Dodger Stadium, game five. No score with Reggie Jackson to lead off for the Yankees. Bob Watson and Lou Pinello to follow. Reggie looks at his strike. Reggie reaching base safely five times yesterday. Only the seventh time in World Series history that that had been accomplished. Reggie lining it fair down the left field line. So he's aboard again. And Dusty Baker with the ball still in play. Picks it up and gets it back in. Jackson has a double. This much must be said for that man. They boo him everywhere he goes. He doesn't run a popularity contest as you look at this again. Incidentally, his batting average against lefties in World Series has been extremely good, above indeed 380. As he moves in for a double into the left field corner, the ball sticking against the wall. But he, give him this, he's a remarkable performer. The dramatic flair doesn't have to be overemphasized. It's just remarkable the way he hit the home run yesterday coming back. Well, they're having a discussion on the ground rules. Because the ball got stuck in the wall. And I think if you go back to the playoff games that Jerry Royce pitched in, the biggest problem he had with the Astro hitters were with their left-handed hitters. He does that was not a bad pitch. It was like thigh high on the outside part of the plate. Got to give Reggie credit. He went right with it, probably because he couldn't really catch up with it. Hit it right inside the bag at third base for a double. Bob Watson having a fine series. Rifles it foul off the top of the Yankee dugout, halfway back and to the lower deck on one. Against Jerry Royce, Bob Watson is hitting 500, 11 for 22 in his career. They were teammates for a while at Houston. And as a pitcher, you know that. I know Rod Carew at one point last year was 23 for 46, and I struck him out with the bases loaded. Uh, how that ever happened, I don't know. But Royce knows that he does not make good pitches. The pitch he hit for the three-run home run was a fastball out over the plate. Still 0-2. No balls, two strikes to count. Jackson at second. Mentioned that Reggie reached five times yesterday. The other fellows who have done that, Babe Ruth did it twice, Lou Brock, Brooks Robinson, Rusty Staub, and Jim, if you can tell me the other guy, I'll give you a buck and a half. Um, don't think I can, Al. Kiko Garcia in the 1979 World Series. Third game. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. One and two the count. You should have gotten out of Baltimore at two and zero, oh, not one and one. You could have won that series in four straight. Weaver didn't bunt Lowenstein. You remember? I was pitching the ball Ray game. Nettles right there, sitting out again, which is killing him. Two and two now. The count on Watson. Reggie's hit was officially ruled a ground rule double. That was why they had the conference with the umpires. Terry Cooney had initially signaled the ball was in play. Now time called as Daryl Thomas heads back toward the gate in center field. And going over to the Dodger dugout is the plate umpire Rich Garcia. You can see it is not flush out there. I don't know if that is what they are discussing at the moment. Thomas had started back in that direction. It will also provoke a visit by Nick Colosi, the third base umpire to the Dodger dugout. As Thomas is pointing to the right of that that door. Uh, it must be a mirror out there. A mirror, a pin, 
something that reflects the sunlight. Well, all the hitters have said this is the most, especially the Dodgers who play here all night games except Sunday, have said this is the most difficult part in the National League to pick up the ball in the daytime because it comes right out of the 395 if, if you're left handed in right center and if you're right, excuse me, if you're left handed and if you're right handed, it comes over the 395 in left center. We're ready now in the 2 2 pitch. He goes to the right side to advance the runner, and Davey Lowe makes a nice play, but Dan can't make the play at first base. Lopes went a long way to handle the ground ball, had it, couldn't hold on, and it cost him. The Yankees with runners at first and third. Well, Watson showed himself as the professional. As you look again, he just reached out and guided that ball to the right side to advance Jackson. It was perfectly placed. It had eyes, and that's why it became, in the ultimate, a difficult play for David. Lopes charged with an error. And with no score and nobody out in the second inning. The Yankees with runners at first and third and Lou Pinella. His figures there for the regular season four for eleven in the World Series. Infield a double play depth. On one. Reggie Jackson at third. Bob Watson held on by Garvey at first. Grounded toward the hole. That's a base hit to score a clapping Reggie Jackson. And Watson pulls in at second. Reggie applauding as he came across home plate, and the Yankees take a one to nothing lead in the second inning. Lou Pinella will go to right when he has to and go to left when he has to. It was a high fastball and Lou showed the quickness of his swing. It was a ground ball probably would have been a double play ball had it been at Russell but was in the middle of the plate and he got got out in front and pulled it in the hole. Now Rick Cerrone with runners at first and second. Say playing even with a bag at third as Cerrone looks at a strike. Positioning of Ron and the rest of the Dodger infield with nobody out and runners at first and second. Strike one pitch. Chopper hit to Russell. He goes to Lopes for one. Davy to first. Double play. Gets two big outs and Watson advances to third. Jerry throws a nice low fastball. Rodriguez. Cerrone hits it in the dirt. Perfect double play ball. Rick not known for his speed. And there you see the pivot. Lopes, excellent throw to Garvey. And doing what a shortstop should do. He comes in, knows he has a chance for two, and Lopes makes a nice throw for the DP. With two out. And Watson at third, Aurelio Rodriguez. Bob Watson, 90 feet away. As Rodriguez, the number eight hitter, stands in. Aurelio, with his third straight start, breaks his bat, hits it down to Russell at short, and Bill throws him out. So the Yankees in the inning settle for one run, two hits. The Dodgers make an error. A man left on through an inning and a half at Dodger Stadium. It's the Yankees one, and the Dodgers nothing. People trust Seiko technology for bold sports watches that perform brilliantly, even 100 meters beneath the sea. People trust Seiko for slim dress watches with every timekeeping function you'll probably ever need. People trust Seiko for watches that are as finely crafted as they are technologically advanced. In fact, people trust Seiko more than any other watch. At your authorized dealer. You've read about it, you've heard about it. But until now, you've never had a better chance to own it. It's the RCA Video Disc Player. The remarkable machine that plays records of movies, concerts, and more on your TV. And to help you be one of the first to own one, RCA is offering a $50 introductory bonus. Buy one now and you'll get $50 direct from RCA. What's more, a special 10-day money-back offer is available at selected RCA dealers. But hurry, you may never have a better chance. Like many married couples, Tom and Mary Ross both worked to pay their mortgage. All State Update. Mortgage Protection. 
Only Tom's life was insured. So when Mary died, Tom couldn't pay the mortgage alone and had to sell their home. If you're a working couple, it could happen to you too. So Allstate Life offers joint mortgage protection. One policy that covers both breadwinners for less than two policies cost. Allstate's joint mortgage protection life insurance. For life, home or auto, you're in good hands with Allstate. It's been a long time between Flights America, but our hero's back. Have a seat, you're gonna love this. Ralph's trained all summer for the season premiere of The Greatest American Hero, Wednesday. Bottom of the second inning in game five of the 1981 World Series. The Yankees leading it one to nothing with Pedro Guerrero, Steve Yeager, and Daryl Thomas coming up for the Dodgers, who had been slumping in postseason play despite their success. Interestingly now, though, the Dodgers have had a man on in the last 22 consecutive innings. The center field, deep but playable for Winfield, and Dave makes the catch. Edge of the track. You saw Winfield motion. He had it under control. Many years ago, Red Barber taught a lot of fans in the early days of baseball broadcasts how to watch a fly ball. Look at the outfield. He would tell them, and you can tell whether he's got a beat on the ball or it's gone. Steve Yeager, one for six. Thus far in the series, the strike. Get word now that what they ruled on the double by Jackson was that it was not a ground rule double. They changed the ruling and they wanted to get that clear with Tommy Lasorda. And that provoked the situation where they gathered with the Dodger manager just to get the ground rule straight. Of course, yesterday we saw Yeager with the, the pinch hit sacrifice fly for the winning, not the winning run, but put him ahead. Deep left field. Little Canella going all the way back, leaps up, and it's off the wall. Winfield plays the carom, and Yeager has it double. Steve Yeager has become one of the more interesting people in this series. His candor in wanting to be traded, yet the excellence of his performance because of his frequent opportunity to play because of opposing southpaw pitches. Mm. Here you saw the nice effort by Pinella. Gidry had an 0 2 count. And here again, you see Lou going back. Doesn't have time to get back to the wall, but almost catches the ball as you see him jump high as he can. Ball hits off his glove. Winfield heads up again, is backing up. Gidry had him 0 and 2 and threw him a slider in the middle of the, of the plate. Not a very good pitch, but Yeager took advantage of it. Almost a home run. Another foot. And the game's tied. Steve just missing. He's at second with one out. And Daryl Thomas, the switch hitter, playing center field today. 0 and 1 the count. That bench in the outfield here is eight feet high. And here's an unusual move with first base open. I know Thomas only hit 200 on the year. You would wonder if they would walk him and pitch the Royce. Thomas lifts it in the air to left center field. Winfield gets a very late start. In trouble now. And Dave makes the catch. Because he misjudged it, because he was in trouble, we'll look at this again. It was a truly remarkable effort. Only a man with his loping strides. Look at them. Like an antelope. Six feet to a step. And they're just in time. That's why we have emphasized his greatness as an athlete. A remarkable catch by Winfield. Having problems at Dodger Stadium. Not uncommon in the outfield, in particular at this time of day in center field. Jerry Royce at the plate, fouling it away. Well, we saw that yesterday, a pivotal play in yesterday's game was Bobby Brown misjudging the ball off Rick Monday's bat. Different time of though, a day though, Jim. A little bit a later. Much easier catch. This guy can hit, as you see from that graphic. Dangerous with runners in scoring position. He too. An exceptional all-around athlete. Fields his position very well. No balls, one strike. Bob Lemon, the Yankee manager. The beleaguered one. Oh, one pitch. And the count on two. Two out. Yeager with a double at second. So the Dodgers have now had a man on in 23 consecutive innings. You have to go back to the fourth inning of the second game. When the Dodgers went out in order. Caught.
ball, strike three. Jerry Royce is gone, and so the Dodgers leave a runner in scoring position, and we'll move to the third at Dodger Stadium. It's the Yankees one, and the Dodgers nothing. I'll tell you, we never realized golf was such a tough game. Hey, it's a lot easier hitting a quarterback than a little white ball. So us linksters drink light beer from Miller. Not just because light tastes great, but because it's got a third less calories than a regular beer. And it's less filling. And you can't afford to get filled up when you're out there trying to get birdies. Yeah, those things move awfully fast. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Why is our Citation X11 such a hero with performance-minded Americans? Let's ask single person. Citation X11, super car. The handling is impressive, yet I've got 40 cubic feet of space here for all my toys. More amazing, it carries five adults comfortably. Then your Citation X11 will fit right in when you're married and have kids. I'm going to pretend you never said that. Now get bigger savings on new 1981 Citations. Now there's a place where they have their own authorized mechanics, quality parts and service, and prices you can afford. Now there's K-Care, found only at Kmart. Why not change to the tire you don't have to change? The KM Special Radial, with two fiberglass belts and aggressive tread design. Goes through rain, mud and snow, yet rides smooth on highways. Now the KM Special is sale priced as low as $31.97. Hey, we'll even rotate them every 5,000 miles at no charge. That's K-Care, only at Kmart. Seven, whatever became of the monkeys, Brigitte Bardot, Pinky Lee, and many more. Where they came from and where they went. A special look at whatever became of them. A hot new series. A two-hour premiere of today's FBI. You're in a risky line of business. Mike Connors busts open a waterfront scandal. I want this walking garbage off my fear. Today's FBI. Tonight, starting at 7, here on ABC. Take another look now at that catch made by Winfield. After first going back on the ball and all the way in with a long stride and making a great play. Third inning. The Yankees ahead one to nothing. Ron Guidry coming up to be followed by Willie Randolph and Larry Milburn. Guidry 0 for 2 in game one. Oh, and one to count. Quickly, nothing in two. Yeah. Royce with a one two delivery. Jaeger can't hold on. Steve shaking off the bare hand. Here you see Gidry fighting off a two strike curveball. Showed he's a pretty good hitter. He sacrificed over in New York. Lined out the left. Ball strike three. Jerry Royce handles him here. And the Dodger left hander has his second strikeout. So one down in the third inning. Willie Randolph, the batter. Palm trees outside Dodger Stadium. Ballpark immaculate. Looks like it was built two years ago. Landscaped magnificently. Check the oil rights under the prop. <laughs> Randolph hits it down the line and right and just foul. Oh and one. Don't forget tomorrow night, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, live 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The Oilers against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Key game for each team in the Central Division AFC battle, each at 4 and 3, each coming off losses. Houston to New England, Pittsburgh to Cincinnati, but each with the personnel to be menacing all the way. 0 oh, 1 pitch is inside of Willie. One and one to count. Randolph grounded out in the first inning. He's two for 11 in the series. 
One out, base is empty in the third. Two and one. And here you see the shadow creeping between the pitcher and the hitter. And what it does, it makes it more difficult to pick up the spin. Royce does not throw that many breaking balls. He does have a slow curveball. Just a little bit more difficult. The ball looks a lot grayer. You don't see it as sharp as you would on a clear day or even at night. Three and one the count. Randolph and his familiar practice of working the pitcher. Well, they don't pitch against Willie Randolph all year, but as a pitcher, you know that you have to get out in front of him. That's why he gets a lot of good fastballs to hit. Willie looks at a strike and we're starting toward first. It's Garcia saying no. He's questioning that call. Well, Willie thinks this pitch is high and he does his job. He's trying to get on. Look, him, look, him, watch him duck the ball. Thought Where he ended up, it was high. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a borderline pitch, and you probably get more of those pitches in the American League than you would in the National League. Yesterday, I think that ball would have definitely been a ball. 3 2 offering is ball four. Royce wanted that one. So Willie Randolph with his seventh walk in the series. And that's something you don't see him do very often. The second in the National League behind Gaylord Perry averaged under two walks. He abused the term cutting the ball a number of times why don't you explain to the viewers well you can throw a fastball you hold it off center and if you're left handed the ball will just come in like a fastball and it'll just kind of sail into him it's a very effective pitch from a guy like Royce to a right handed hitter because it looks like a fastball and just moves toward him they hit a lot of the balls up on the handle we saw this the last time with Milbourne who's up now he ran the fastball in on him Randolph at first base Oh, and one. What would be the most distinguishing difference, Jim, between a cut fastball and a slider? It's not really a, the spin. The ball just does not have as much spin as the slider does. And, and Royce, you can see him. He, I don't think he feels very comfortable out there. He's, a lot of his pitches are up in the strike zone. And for him to be effective, he has to keep the ball down, get that ball working down in the strike zone. Top foul at the plate. Oh, and two. Steve Howe. The man who held the fort, but just barely remembering Randolph's final out. Boy, did that ball carry too yesterday? Out the right center wall. Yep. I don't think anybody thought that ball was going as far as it did, but it, another illustration of how well the ball is carrying. Ron Say said, "You look at the Friday night a perfect example. You usually look up the third deck and you'd see dew, and not a whole lot of moisture on Friday night." Key pitch for Royce thus far in this game was the double play ball of Cerrone. When Cerrone hit to the left side and probably should have been trying to go right. 0 2 pitch is hit down the right field line but foul. Hey, Johnny, you're growing old gracefully. <laughs> See if you're ever on his show again, huh? <laughs> no, I told him that when we wrapped up the Burt Reynolds roast. Friar's roast in New York. Johnny was the MC. I was the wrap-up speaker. I laid that on him. And he agrees. Yeah. Pitch outside. One ball, two strikes on Milburn. Well, you talked about the double play that that Cerrone hit into. What Royce did at that point was stay away from the big inning. And the, that he couldn't do that in New York. Three run home run. Testimony to the Way Royce holds runners aboard. Line in the left field, and that will fall in for a base hit in front of Baker. Randolph pulling in at second. Hit number three off Jerry Royce. So Dave Winfield. Winfield. Now, as George Steinbrenner openly said earlier on Sports Beat. Winfield is in effect he said is paralyzing this team because of his failures thus far at the plate. There is George. Obviously nervous. What he thought might become a breeze after the second Yankee victory has become indeed turmoil. Well they need to win this game. It's not a must game because there could be two following this but a hit from Winfield or a Winfield that's productive offensively would Definitely allow them to score more runs. He 
He's over eager. You just saw it. He's swinging at every first pitch. You notice, Jim? Well, that's true. And as we said yesterday, he did that on numerous occasions. But also, I'm sure he's not seeing the ball well, either because of the shadows and the fact that he's slumping. Any hitter you ever talk to says when things are going bad, they have trouble picking up the ball coming out of the pitcher's hand. And there was a perfect illustration chasing a bad pitch. 0 oh, 1 to Winfield. Chop to third. Ron Say goes to Davy Lux for one. Back on the Garvey, not in time there. Milburn is erased at second as Randolph advances to third. Winfield at first. And with two down, we'll see Reggie. Here you see a good pitch from Royce. Winfield chases. Say makes sure he gets one. You'll see the throw, but Winfield has excellent speed, as we've said all during this series, and beats the throw to first. But still a big out in a situation where Winfield had a chance to open up the ball game. So in effect, he fell. Here's Reggie with two singles, a home run, a double, and a couple of walks. On base six straight times. Looks at a strike. On one. Reggie, 10 career World Series home runs, the 10th coming here yesterday, and six of the 10 here at Dodger Stadium. What people don't realize about Reggie, you go back to the playoff game I pitched against him in 1971 where he homered to left field twice. Yankee Stadium takes away a lot of his power. I think if you look at the last World Series that he played in, everybody's seen him pull the ball. But we saw him last time go to left field, not because he probably wanted to, but because Royce made a pretty good pitch. In Dodger Stadium, he can hit the ball out of any field. Oh, one pitch. Lays off. One and one. On, Runner at third. Milburn. Winfield at first, held on by Garvey in the count. One and one. Take your part. Randolph at third. With two down. Reggie fouling it away well back into the upper deck. And the count is one and two. And here you have Royce having the situation he wants. Reggie has to look for both the curveball and that fastball. Crowd starting to build with two strikes. They want the K. Perfect pitch. Reggie swings right through it. Big strikeout for Royce. Recently, a few extraordinary wines were entered in a prestigious international competition. Wines made from costly varietal grapes, harvested in some of the world's finest growing regions. An oak-aged Chardonnay, a deep, full-flavored Burgundy, a light, dry Chenin Blanc, a varietal Rosé, a spicy Gewürztraminer. And each of these wines, all from a single winemaker, was judged to be among the best of the world. Silver medal, gold medal, silver, gold, gold medal. The wines, all from America, all from California, and all from the wine cellars of America's premier vintners, Ernest and Julio Gallo.
Friday night boxing excitement is back. November 6th, a battle of unbeaten heavyweights. WBC champ Larry Holmes, who has turned back 10 challengers to his WBC title, including Muhammad Ali, Leon Spinks, and WBA champ Mike Weaver, defends his crown against WBC 8th rank Ronaldo Snipes. On the same card, undefeated WBC 2nd rank heavyweight Michael Dokes battles George Chaplin. A great night of heavyweight boxing action, November 6th, live on ABC. The only run of the game coming in the top of the second inning. Reggie Jackson doubled, moved to third when Davy Lopes couldn't handle a ground ball by Bob Watson. Lou Pinella with a solid single to left. The Yankees lead oh, one nothing oh. as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Lopes, Russell, and Garvey. Second time around, and these are the dangerous guys. All one to Lopes. Save for cleanup. Fly ball in the center. Wentfield staggered a bit. In control now. One away. Magic Johnson is his Michigan State alumnus. Los Angeles Laker. Played with our producer Dennis Lewin at Michigan State, didn't he? If he did, it would be a major story. <laughs> <laughs> Big basket last night in the Lakers win. Bill Russell looks at a strike on one. Unless the magic one was then small enough to play midget <laughs> basketball. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Chet Forty. <laughs> <laughs> Grounded to a third as Rodriguez backs up and gets it two down. Here's an important man you see right there, Aurelio Rodriguez. Probably the best backup second baseman in the American League. Third baseman. Excuse me. Yes, he is playing third. And I'm sure that Ron Guidry will take advantage of him today. Steve Garvey, 529 average in the five games. It's really amazing. Nine hits. Getting hits with the profusion of Bobby Richardson in the 1960s series against Pittsburgh. Oh, and one, remember too, it was Garvey who hit the ball on which Nettles made the great play in game one for an out. Oh, yes. That stabbing catch of that savage line drive. Two out, nobody on, one to nothing, New York in the third. Oh, and two. You saw Cerrone give a sign with two strikes, and Clyde King, the Yankee pitching coach, said he, the last thing he likes to see is a two-strike base hit. Gidry started to hop off the mound. He really thought he had it. It was close. Well, that's where you asked the umpire whether it was high or was it outside, or was it both? Well, Ron thought it came in. Foul away. Bobby Richardson Howard he and Lou Brock sharing the series record for most hits in the World Series 13 Garvey's on that sort of pace right now count holding it a ball and two strikes Third strikeout victim. Ron has struck out one in each of the first three innings. We'll move along to the fourth in game five. It's one to nothing, Yankees. You already know that Napa has quality parts for American cars. But how about Napa's import parts? Well, whether you drive a spider or a beetle, a thing or a brat, or if you just happen to be driving a rabbit or a fox, a miser or a midget you can find Napa parts for it. And that adds up to dependability in any language. Because from Audis to Z cars, when the name is Napa, the standard is quality. Do you 
Dear Atari Anonymous, my son Boris has a missile command problem. My mission in life is to save all of mankind. Lately, my daughter has developed a similar problem with Atari warlords. Now, with video pinball, my husband is acting funny lately. With Atari games so ingenious, so involving, so intense, I ask you, Atari Anonymous, is this problem contagious? Welcome to our people-pleasing places. Good luck. Holiday Inn makes me feel like a winner. That's why my team chooses Holiday Inn. No surprises. Beds always comfortable, always. Big rooms. And there's a Holiday Inn hotel near just about everywhere we play. <laughs> well, let's go call them like we see them. You have to see them to call them. Holiday Inn is number one in people pleasing. Bradshaw square off as the Oilers battle the Steelers in an AFC Central Division barn burner, Monday night on ABC. The quiet man from Dawtown, Ohio, led the Dodgers, as we have told you, to the first World Series victory ever, 1955, and then three more after that. Remember when he became the manager? Could he handle Robinson? Could he handle Ferrella? Could he handle Snyder? Some of the unbridled ones. Well, he did. Bob Watson leads off in the fourth. Not only did he handle them, but he handled all of them uh, under one year contracts all the way down the line. Probably would have asked for a long term contract if he didn't have players that could perform as well as they could. <laughs> Never wrote a letter to Waller O'Malley the way Chuck Dressen, the late Chuck Dressen did under the guidance of his wife that got him fired. You saw Lou Pinello waiting on deck with a count of two balls, no strikes on Watson. Bob reached on an error in the second inning. 3 0. Oh. Now you can see that the pitcher's mound and the plate area encased in shadow, but the ball is still coming out of the sunlight. On the board on four pitches. Jerry Royce yielding his second base on ball. And Ron Paranoski comes out of the Dodger dugout. He's, pay a visit. he's doing this, I'm sure, because as Jim has noticed, Royce doesn't seem comfortable out there. Jim's commented on it, and he's getting in and out of trouble, and that could reach a breaking point. Well, that he is, but what makes it more difficult is when Watson comes up and hitting as well as he has. and getting the three run home run you have to pitch carefully and uh, the, as we said yesterday pitchers are human some days you can make good pitches and some days you can't right now it seems to me that Royce is struggling he's struggling with his control and he's just getting a lot of the balls in the center of the plate and I guess he felt that he couldn't do that to Watson and wasn't able to make a good pitch Royce normally doesn't struggle with his control over the past two seasons he's averaged just one point six blocks per nine innings says Pinella. Fouls one away. One one. Lou with a base hit in the second inning, driving in. The game's only run thus far. Yankees one, Dodgers nothing. In the fourth. Watson held aboard by Garvey. He could possibly look for a hit and run, trying to get a run, another runner in scoring position. Lou handles the bat extremely well. Royce keeping it inside on him. One and one. Who is the best S. Stewart in the bullpen, the best hit and run hitter you've seen, Jim, in your career? Well, 1965, when I came up in spring training, Dick Grote. Played for St. Louis, who was excellent, I think, in the American League. Cookie Rojas, one of the best handlers of the bat I've ever seen, especially on the high pitch. That was a good pitch by Royce, my friend. And Lou way out in front, lunging at it. Well, that's the same pitch he hit in Yankee Stadium for the fourth run. Royce did not make a good pitch with his curveball. And that's the first curveball he's thrown for a strike all day today. That's basically what you can say about pitchers. When you make the good pitches, a lot of times you get you get an out. If you make a bad one, it gives the hitter a chance to, to get a 
better chance to really hit the ball. Vanella hits it down to Davy Lopes at second, drops it, and has only one play, and after hesitating, throws it into the Yankee dugout. So what started out as if it might be a double play, all of a sudden turns into two men aboard for the Yankees, and with the ball going into the dugout, the umpire is going to rule that Watson will be allowed to score, and Lasorda is going to come out and plead the case with third base umpire yeah. Nick Colosi. Judgment call, though. They're, they're going to bring there. him back. They're going to bring him back to third. Tommy said, what is this? On, a, on an out, outfield throw, you get two bases, but Watson was going to second. And here, Lopes is thinking two. Now he's thinking one, and he just doesn't get it. You can see that he doesn't get a good grip on the ball, comes out of his hand, and then he makes a bad throw to complicate matters even worse. Now Bob Lemon pleading his case and getting the interpretation with the ball going all the way into the Yankee dugout. They'll send Watson back to third. And Pinella will be at second. They have given Lopes two errors on the play. And he now has three thus far today. So runners at second and third. Dodger infield. Russell is moving back at short with Lopes in at second and say about even with a bag at third. Cerrone hits one down to Russell and despite Billy being back Watson will hold at third as they get the out at first base. So Watson remains there with Pinella second. That was interesting. Russell moved in as if he was going to play in then kept looking into the dugout and kept moving back. And despite Billy being back, Watson holds a third. What's interesting here is the continuity of pattern. The Yankees blew scoring opportunities in the second, even though they got one run. They had a couple of men on base, nobody out, run in. Here comes the intentional walk. In the third, left a couple on base when Reggie himself struck out. And if they blow another one here, it'll be much like yesterday when they had nothing but men left on base through the early innings and just didn't capitalize. It's an interesting pattern. The walk to Rodriguez to load the bases. You could see Pinello. He had the shot of Lou, his frustration, as he went back into second, noting the positioning of Russell and the non-advancement of the Yankee runners. Well, I think that's a statement on Watson's speed. He he and Joe Altabelli down at third felt that uh, he wouldn't go on a ground ball at one of their infielders. I think he could have easily made it, but it's a decision you have to make before the pitch is going to be hit. You take your lead and you're kind of leading towards home plate, and if the ball is hit and you know where the, the infielder's position, you probably could have scored easily. As I said, the interesting thing there was that Russell looked like he was playing in and kept looking into the dugout, and as Royce went into his motion, Billy moved back a couple of steps. Be that as it may, the Dodgers have been capitalizing on Yankee mistakes. The Yankees have not been capitalizing on Dodger mistakes. Ron Guidry. Guidry bluffing a bunt. One and oh. Russell, as we take a look at the Dodger positioning in the infield, Russell is halfway lopes more than halfway in. Garvey even with a bag at first. Laying down the butt. Fielded by Royce. Comes home to Jaeger for the force. So Gedry with the bases loaded. Trying to butt home a run. But Jerry Royce down off the mound and doing his job. And they throw out the lead man. And here you see the bunt right back to Royce. He makes a nice play. Because the ball does short hop him. But Watson would not a whole lot of speed is easily out at home. And there's a difference between the American League and the National League again with a designated hitter rule. You wouldn't have that situation. So two down with the bases still loaded. Willie Randolph grounded out. Drew a walk. Two for 11 in the series. This is a tough batsman. But let me tell you this. The Yankees if 
if Royce gets out of this, it'll certainly have an effect on the Yankees. Not one you'll read immediately on the scoreboard, but certainly on their psyches. One and the count. And here we'll see if Royce respects the fact that Randolph is willing to walk. We'll see if he gets a good pitch to hit. Bases loaded, two down. Grounded sharply down to Garvey. Stays with it. Does it himself. And the Yankees have already left six men on base. I'm sure Steinbrenner noting that in his scorebook. After three and a half, it's the Yankees one. And the Dodgers nothing. Uh, Rainmaker to ground. Okay, Rainmaker. One more, how to do it? Raj picking us up a radio. Tell that fire not to go anywhere. <laughs> You got it. Does that mean it's Miller time? Roger. Miller time. Well, it's time to relax. Time for the best tasting beer you can find. The beer stands clear. Miller Highline. If you got the time, Miller's got the beer. Good. Now cut it in half. Where's that piece on inflation? She broke it from Dean Witter. Today? Some people just aren't easy to please. Well, Especially when it comes to their investments. Jim, how we do? You look like you just heard from Dean Witter. At Dean Witter, we can give even the hard to please investor something to smile about. Now, Brian. You look like you just heard from Dean Witter. Throughout history, we've created sounds to call out over vast distances. Now, Zenith System 3 introduces the only television that's also a telephone. With advanced space phone, you can take or make calls anywhere in the world, right through your set. Hello, London speaking. No other TV set can make that call. System 3 from Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. Thursday. John Lennon, alive in the hearts of millions, and Liverpool, his home, remembers his beginnings. The road to fame and fortune, Thursday on 2020. Go to the bottom of the fourth inning at Dodger Stadium. The Yankees on top, one to nothing. Series even at two games apiece. Game six in New York on Tuesday night, if a seventh is necessary. Yankee Stadium on Wednesday night. One run, three hits, and no errors for the Yanks. No runs, two hits, and three errors, all by Lopes for the Dodgers. But again, the Yankees unable to capitalize. Give credit to this Dodger team. Give credit to Jerry Royce. He's working out of trouble consistently. May yet put it all together and blow them down. And now the difficult run, say. Say, Baker and Guerrero. 0-1. Say, walking in his only appearance thus far today. Day five for 15 in the series. Curling foul. Out of play. 0 oh 2. Ron Guidry, who went seven innings in game one. Though, one and two the count. Adrian, it's been pointed out often, not completing any games this season. And of course, a good reason for that is the man named Gossett. Curling foul again, out of play. Tommy Lasorda. Third time he has guided the Dodgers into the World Series. And he's managing very, very well. He had the guts to stick with Valenzuela. The first Dodger victory, and he worked miracles yesterday. Say, goes down swinging, and that's four strikeouts, the last two in succession for Guidry. Dusty Baker really struggling coming up. He's two for 16 in the World Series thus far, and Howard talked with him about his problems. Dusty, quite candidly, you've been struggling. What's been wrong? Well, I've been struggling now the last couple of weeks. Uh, my timing's been wrong. Uh, my balance has been wrong. Uh, and I've been 
struggling to find my uh, my balance and my timing, and those are the two most important parts of hitting. Because uh, when they're off, uh, your your speed, your bats off, uh, your depth perception is off. Wind to swing, and uh, and basically that's it. And uh, you know, hopefully today I'll get going because I feel very positive, and I know it's just a matter of time until I hit. Baker, 0 for 1 today. Well, he did hit a line shot in that one turn at bat when Pinella made the staggering catch and fell to his knees. Got good wood on it then. So maybe he's right. Maybe he'll come out of it today. One ball, one strike to count. One out, base is empty. As the Jets lay it off, and the pitch missing for ball two. Had an urge, but held. Well, that was the second changeup that Gidry's thrown today. There's Jerry Royce. Did really pitch himself out of a jam last inning. Made some good pitches. He's a competitor. Two and two. Can't find a nicer guy than Dusty Bakers. We used to come north with the Atlanta Braves when he played with Atlanta. He and Ralph Gar and people like that. Outstanding, not only outstanding players, but super guy. Johnny B. Baker Jr. His problems continue, and meanwhile, Gidry has struck out three in a row and five in the game. Two down. You know, like Dusty said, he has, he has a real big swing, so a lot of things can go wrong. And when you're struggling, you don't see the ball. Gidry made an excellent pitch with the slider there, and things just comp compound each other. But you touched on something the other day when he damaged his wrist up in Montreal, and this may be an aftermath. He's not feeling comfortable up there. Being off rhythm may be an aftermath. Subconsciously trying to protect them. Pedro Guerrero, 0 for 1. All in one account. Gidry with three successive strikeouts, five in the game, and he has set down seven in a row and eight of the last nine. One nothing Yanks, two out, bottom of the fourth. After a bad pitch, and the count is 0 2. But real bad. Well, it's almost the same pitch he hit deep to center field. Uh, if you characterize the Dodger team, they are free swinging. But the only guy that really has a whole lot of patience is Ron Say. Guerrero was up there to hit the high fastball. He's a much better fastball hitter. And started him off with a slider, and then he chased a high, bad fastball. And there you saw the slider again. Ron Gidry has struck out the side. He has struck out four in a row, six in the game. We've played four, and it remains the Yankees one and the Dodgers nothing. Go to Color 2 Film for Prince captures all the colors you can imagine. Brilliant yellows and greens from luscious watermelon to radiant peacock. Spectacular blues from indigo to blueberry you can taste. Vivid reds from rose to flame. More colors than your eyes can see. The more you care about color, the more you need Coda Color 2 Film from Kodak, America's Storyteller. Right guard knows a man needs all the protection he can get. That's why Right Guard Solid has an action triggered formula. Triggered to release protection when your body needs it most. So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Right Guard Action Triggered Formula helps keep you dry and odor free all day. Right Guard Antiperspirant Solid. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. Why is our front wheel drive Chevy Citation such a hero with so many Americans? Let's ask Perfect Couple. Our citation? Perfect car. Roomy perfection for five. Plus perfect wagon-like space for our twin golden retriever. Perfect breed. No wonder citation sales have passed a million. Thank you, perfect couple, but it's point nine million. Okay, nearly a million. Nobody's perfect. Now get bigger savings on new 1981 citations. I want to tell you about a new show tonight. Don't miss a special two-hour premiere, an exciting all-new dramatic series that has been inspired by FBI cases. It's called Today's FBI, beginning tonight right after Game 5 in the Eastern and Central time zones. And here on the West Coast, you'll see it at 8 o'clock. Today's FBI. 
Larry Milburn to lead off in the fifth inning and looks at a strike. Milburn, Winfield, and Jackson with the Yankees ahead one to nothing. Oh, one pitch. Down to the plate, nothing in two. The more I see the Dodger pitching staff, the more I see how well the ball carries and how irregular the infield is here, the more I admire the fact that they were second in the National League and earned run average. And when you go back through the years, the Dodgers seemingly have had a good pitching staff ever since they moved to Los Angeles. We talked about the reason uh, yesterday. It used to be the biggest park probably in the National League, with the exception of Houston, until they moved the fences in back in 1968. Come backer, Jerry Royce takes care of him. He had no burn, completely reaching. I think Jerry Royce is a beautiful pitcher to watch. Never loses his poise, unruffled by pressure situations. He's made some adjustments over the years, too. It wasn't that long ago, five, six years back, when Royce could just simply blow you away. Throw fastball after fastball, and he had several games in which he struck out 10 or more. Winfield 0 for 2. Oh, on the count. Well, that time he did not swing at the first pitch. He's lucky he did. First time this game, as you said during the series, he likes to get his arms extended. And they're really they're keeping the ball down or they're pitching him in. Line to left field, and he finally gets that elusive first hit. So Dave Winfield 0 for 16 in the series thus far with a base hit. There you see. I think he wants, wants the ball, is what it is. <laughs> Dave said, Give me that ball. I've been waiting to play in a World Series. I want the ball. <laughs> See him pointing for it right there. Well, he can keep a sense of humor. So they'll put it away for him. One for the trophy case. And here's a man who's got about nine shelves worth of balls from the World Series, or should have anyway. Jackson with a double. And he struck out in the third, one for two. Reggie hitting it in the air, curling foul, and well back out of play. I thought Jim made a very important point. Well, there's Winfield getting the ball again. When he talked about Reggie's ability to hit it out in all directions here, there's his elation at finally getting his first World Series hit. There it is. Jim and I saw Reggie hit one out in the left field in the 77 series here. Jackson a chopper and a lope. Davey the second for one. Back to first double play. So Reggie had been on six straight times, but they've taken care of him twice in succession. We're halfway through, middle of the fifth, still one to nothing, New York. I can't see a thing, Stan. Did you turn on the windshield wipers? Of course I did. See? No, no, I can't. Obviously. We need new wipers. We obviously need new wipers. Replace your old blades at least once a year with Anko, with specially formulated natural rubber for a smooth, clean wiping action. That's a lot better, Ollie. It certainly is. <laughs> Let's drive on. Not too fast, Ollie. Might be a school zone. New Backwoods Smokes just hit town. Looking wild, but tasting mild. New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. All natural tobacco, hand rolled look in a keep em fresh pocket pouch. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? Want me to check on him? I'll do it. A child's future is what life insurance is all about. Sentry, one of the country's largest insurance companies, is often first in finding better ways to guard that future. Sentry's new mortgage life plan can match your current mortgage and be adjusted if your mortgage should change. 
That's more than just protection. That's peace of mind. It's 10 o'clock. And all is well. With Sentry, you know all's well. Wednesday, a special two-hour premiere. Who are you? Lee Majors is Hollywood's hottest stuntman. Sometimes I'm Robert Redford. Catch the fall guy, Wednesday. Going to the bottom of the fifth inning, the Yankees on top, one to nothing. Cleveland over Baltimore. Look at the day, Brian Sipak, 42 to 28. New Orleans upset Cincinnati. Buffalo beats Denver. And Detroit beats Green Bay. Steve Yeager leads things off for the Dodgers. Oh, and one the count. Other scores. Oh, Dallas trying to beat Miami. Minnesota falling to St. Louis. Oh, what a league this year. Washington upsetting New England. The 0-1 to Yeager is taken high. One and one. The Giants beat Atlanta in overtime. How about that? As Mel Allen would have said, the Bears leading San Diego. Jaeger popping it up. Rodriguez there on the left side. One out. That ends one string for Gidry. He had struck out four in a row, but keeps alive another. He has retired nine in a row. Seattle beating the Jets, as they almost always do. I think Pete Rozelle may have achieved his dream. The Eagles constant beating Tampa Bay. He may have achieved an utterly mediocre league. Look at Oakland, 17 to nothing over Kansas City and San Francisco beating the Rams. They know about that here in Dodger Town. They're not happy. Thomas taking low, ball one. The thing about Ron Guidry is that the Dodgers hitter after facing him in the first game really felt he ch changed speeds a lot more than he did back in 1978. And first batter of this inning, Steve Yeager. He homered off him in New York on a high fastball away. He doubled almost a home run here on a high slider. And that time he came back with a changeup, something that Yeager hasn't seen. Got him to pop the third base. We're seeing the Ron Guidry of, of 1981 at its best right now. A strike and the count one and two. We may not have seen him at his best necessarily in game one, but still he got the job done. Seven innings. Gossage came on. Davis and Gossage. Well, Gossage did, the, <laughs> did exactly. the, the positive job. Davis walking two in that game. Two and two the count. Daryl Thomas. 0 for 1 today and 0 for 3 in the series. Switch hitter. We just saw an interesting thing, Jim, that you, as the great pitcher you are and have been, know very much about. Ron knew that he was beginning to work too quickly. He walked off to the back of the mound, steadied himself, paced himself, came back after having thrown two straight balls to Thomas. Well, he made two pitches he didn't want to, to make, and I think the, the thing that pitchers do most is hurry up and that can get you into some trouble. Thomas down on strikes. So Gidry now is seven strikeouts. Has struck out five of the last six. Gidry this season averaged 7.3. He was third in the league per nine innings. It's really per seven innings. I know Clyde King, the pitching coach, says that he doesn't send his pitchers out there to pitch seven innings, but you know when they have a record of something like 55 out of 58 of leads they've gone into late inning ball games. You know the pitchers on the Yankee staff know if they go out there and pitch a good strong seven innings that Gossage is going to come in and do the job for them. Jerry Royce one and oh the count. So this game in stark contrast to what we have seen in games three and four. Pitchers duel today. Ball two to Royce. That's still a tough tense tight ball game which can change with just one blow. Well it's a pitcher you know one mistake can mean the ball game. Got the corner, two and one. It's a far cry from the game that Gidry pitched in New York, where he had a five to one lead going late into the, going really into the seventh inning. Royce laying off, and the pitcher's away, so he's three and one. Three on the and pitcher. one on the opposing pitcher. Davy Lopes on deck. Goes back again, Jim. Settle down, steady himself. 
Well, there's a reason for this, possibly, Howard. He, he's faced eight straight right-handed hitters, and all of a sudden you have a pitcher come up that's standing on the that's open That's one of the best points yet. The value of an alternating lineup. 3-2 pitch is found away. Frequently, if a southpaw faces a totally right-handed opposing lineup, he can get a bead on an outside corner and stifle the opposition. Jerry Royce takes ball four. As Cerrone was on his way to the dugout, so was Guidry. Second walk given up by Guidry. Here you see the 3-2 fastball. He wants to throw it down the middle. Jerry Royce, being a rather tall guy, just a little bit low for ball four. You know what I have in mind, Jim? Back in the 50s when the Yankee-Dodger World Series rivalry was in its prime, the Dodgers had a predominantly right-handed hitting line. Reese, Ferrillo, Robinson, Campanella, Hodges, all of them. And they had their greatest troubles against slow-balling left-handers who would get a bead on that outside corner. Examples, Johnny Schmitz, Kenny Heitzelman, Baby loves the batter. One and all, you saw the ignominious graphic that Baby has done with three errors today and five in the series, tying the all-time World Series record for second baseman. Kenny Raffensperger was another. Lopes 0 for 2 today, 4 for 17 in the series. One and one. And there you saw Lopes helping him out, swinging the ball out of the strike zone. Certainly did. did. But that's the difference between the Dodgers leadoff man, Lopes, and Willie Randolph for the Yankees. Lopes walked 22 times this year. Randolph, not even having a good season, walked 57 times. A little bit different. Davey, after hitting 26 home runs, wants to hit that pitch. One and two the count. Interestingly, Royce, who did not walk once during the regular season, draws the walk here. Jerry at first base, and Watson is playing well back of him. With two down. You see the positioning of Bob with the count. One ball and two strikes now on Davy Lopes. Chop to Milburn. Comes up throwing and dug out by Watson. Good play at both ends. No runs, no hits. Leave one through five. Still Yanks one, Dodgers nothing. Back in Los Angeles after this commercial and a word from our local stations. People trust Seiko technology for bold sports watches that perform brilliantly even 100 meters beneath the sea. People trust Seiko for slim dress watches with every timekeeping function you'll probably ever need. People trust Seiko for watches that are as finely crafted as they are technologically advanced. In fact, people trust Seiko more than any other watch. At your authorized dealer. Premiering Wednesday, Lee Majors is Hollywood's hottest stuntman, the Paul Guy. Names are funny things. A few years ago, hardly anybody knew mine. So Richmond asked me to tell you about their suit names. This is a new Adams Row suit, traditional and classic. This is a Carlo suit, a very contemporary look. If you already like designer named suits, you've got to see Carlo, only at a Richmond store. Once you try Richmond, no one else will suit you. Carlo's a nice name for a suit, but they could have named it Brian. Bank of America introduces the little bank that stays open even when the big bank is closed. Our new Versateller automated tellers let you make a deposit. Easy. Get cash. Easy. Check your account balance. Easy. And more from 6 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week with push button ease. We have a lot of big banks in the Los Angeles area. Soon, we'll have a lot of little banks too. Versateller automated tellers. More money convenience coming soon from Bank of America. DMSO and X-Rated TV starts Wednesday on 7. This is still anybody's ball game. A one to nothing game, anything can happen. I remember 1947, the World Series, and maybe you do too. Harry Lavagetto, they called him Cookie, pitch hitting bottom of the ninth, two out, two on. A no hitter for Bill Bevins up to that point. Lavagetto out to right field, off the tricky Ebbets Field wall. Both runners scored. The Dodgers won the game. Then in the sixth game, a 
tremendous blow by the Yankee clip and Joe DiMaggio, but look, little Jean Frito and DiMaggio disgusted. That was some serious, Mr. Michaels. Mm -hmm. Back, 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 whoa, doctor, <laughs> on that catch. Red Barber calling it. Bob Watson in the sixth inning. Yankees ahead, one to nothing. Four one to count. Like the way you said, that tricky right field ball oh, yeah. at Ebbets Field. It was yep. both concave and convex, and Tommy Hendrick watched that ball and struggled with it. If the sign, win a shoot. Huh? <laughs> and the Huh, what a beautiful shot from the Goodyear Blimp. Goodyear Blimp Columbia, there it is. High above Chavez Ravine. You know who scored the winning run that game? Uh, let me take a guess. You know. Eddie Mixes. Eddie Mixes. Mixes will fix us. That was the motto in those days. Jim was going to say Kiko Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> Watson gets it down to short. Russell stays with it and gets it. Rose pitching him beautifully with the change of speed. Ball out in front. Well, he can do that when he gets ahead of the hitter. So. Last couple innings, he's making much better pitches. What we would call from a pitcher's standpoint, quality pitches. Lou Pinella, his base hit in the second inning, driving in the game's only run. He joined us late, the Yankees. In the second, Jackson a double. Davy Lopes then made an error on a ground ball by Watson. Jackson moving to third. And Pinella followed with a single to left. But Royce was able to escape further damage in that inning by getting Cerrone to hit into a double play. The Yankees lead 1 0, but the Yanks have also stranded six through five. In the air to right field, deep and playable. Guerrero is there and makes the play at the edge of the track. Two down. Tommy Lasorda's wife. Lovely lady. Yes, she is. And here's the man who's been, if the Yankees have a non-hero, if not quite a goat today, this would be he, Rick Cerrone. Got up with men on second and third. Quickly hit to the shortstop, never scored a runner. And then first time up hit into a double play with two on. Yeah. Oh, and one account. But on sports beat, Steinbrenner unhesitatingly said Cerrone will be back. Earlier, there had been rumors of a trade. But Rick has played very well in postseason play generally, and he'll be back. Line to left field, Dusty Baker is right there, though, and makes the catch. So Cerrone gone, Yankees gone. One, two, three, they go in the six. We'll go to the bottom of the six with a score. The Yankees won and the Dodgers nothing. Blow away everything you ever heard about pickups and meet the revolutionary new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Chevy S10. Longer than the imports. But smaller than full size pickups. There's never been a truck like it before. Never. Big roomy cab. And heavier payload than many standard full-size pickups. Chevy S10. The new size Chevy S10. Order yours today. There's never been a truck like it before. Never! Chevy is the power in trucks. Bruised by his bicycle's bone-rattling ride, a boy complains, and his father listens. To cushion the bumps, John Dunlop invents the inflatable tire. For 27 years, automobiles were reserved for the rich, but a young engineer listens to what the world wants, a car anyone can afford. At Sperry, history has convinced us that listening well inspires new inventions, ignites new thoughts, and covers whole new worlds of fresh ideas. From advanced computer systems to breakthrough technology in aerospace, listening keeps us at the forefront of all we do. If any doubt its power, consider where we'd be today if Queen Isabella of Spain hadn't listened nearly 500 years ago. Sperry, we understand how important it is to listen. 
a battle of unbeatens. WBC heavyweight champ Larry Holmes defends his crown against Ronaldo Snipes. The WBC World Heavyweight Championship on the line, November 6th, live on ABC. Al Michaels with Howard Cosell and Jim Palmer as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Game five of the 1981 World Series. The series tied to two games apiece. The Yankees leading here one to nothing. And the crowd coming to life with Russell, Garvey, and Shea facing Guidry here in the sixth. Bill Russell takes high, ball one. Key inning, it seems to me, for Guidry because of his tendency during the season to begin to weaken from here on out. Right, Jim? Well, it is. He's coming right into the middle of their lineup. And to me, it's a key inning, but it's also very important to get Bill Russell out because you have Garvey following. You've had Say behind him. And even though Baker's not hitting, always a threat. In there for a strike. That pitch was Guidry's 72nd of the game. And only 21 of them have missed the strike zone. Russell hits it in the air to left center field deep. Pinella on the move and makes the catch on the run on the track. He got pretty decent wood on that pitch. Well, again, it's probably because Guidry realizes two and one. He doesn't want to Felt, walk him. That's right. Fell behind. But there's Pinella on the catch. Not a particularly difficult catch. Lose a very underrated outfield. His, his job in the course of the American League is mostly to be a, a DH, a designated hitter. But if we go back to 78 in the playoffs and in the World Series, makes some great, great plays. Garvey gets fooled, half swing strike, 0 and 1 on Steve. 1 for 2 today and 9 for 18 in the World Series. Not even at 1 and 1. Look at those stats. Only in 78 did he tail off. Turn one again. Nobody's perfect. That's right. Well, if you go back to 1978 and, and if you watch the game, it seemed to me that he was not very patient at the plate. The fact that they pitched him very well, and as Dave Winfield started swinging a lot of bad pitches. Two and two. And there Ball is really dipping. Well, that's his slider, and yep. when you can throw a two-one slider, and you can throw it in that particular spot, you're going to be very successful. That's why he has seven strikeouts. There you saw another one. Full count. He's walked two to go along with the seven strikeouts. And again, full count. This is twice in this inning. Garvey should get a pretty pit, good pitch to hit. So you have to worry about the next guy, Ron Say, with capabilities of hitting a home run. 3 2 pitch is swung on and missed. Gets away from Sarone, but he'll throw him out at first. Eight strikeouts for Louisiana Lightning. And here's a 3 2 slider. It's in the dirt, but that shows you what a great slider Guidry has. Garvey heads up, sees the ball bound away from Sarone. Rick has an easy play. Makes a strong, accurate throw to Watson at first. Two away. The Dodgers hitless since the second inning when Yeager doubled with one out. Their only other hit, a single by Garvey in the first. This little poison. Ron Say, on one. Used to call Paul Wayne a big poison, Lloyd Wayne a little poison, but they were both little fellas. Built in the manner of Ron Say, Paul was. Well, you can see that Ron Say, you can look at his legs. That's where he gets a lot of his power. And his forearms are rather massive. One and one. Bob Turley lost that game in 10 innings to Clem Levine on a savage line drive over Enos Slaughter's head at Ebbets Field. Say hits a choppy down a third, blocked and recovered by Rodriguez. Strong throw gets him. Aurelio gets in front of it and makes the play. One third baseman throwing out the other. Hard Look. ball hit right at him. He gets right in front of it, as you said, Al. And here you'll see a strong arm. Nice throw to Watson. Aurelio going down on one knee, keeps it in front of him, has time to throw him out, and the Dodgers are gone in order. We'll go to the seventh inning at Dodger Stadium. One to nothing, Yankees. We'll open your eyes. Great picture.
picture. What kind of... RCA color track. Thought they only made the big ones. Guess you thought wrong. I have an RCA. Really? Big projection TV. Let RCA open your eyes. Really? From our smallest color track to our giant bright projection TV. What do you think? The picture's gorgeous, Bob. George. We'll open your eyes. Open your eyes. RCA. When an engine needs a rebuild, I bring it to Joe. That's me. And you know what he's rebuilding a lot more of these days? Four-cylinder engines. Small engines work a lot harder than big engines. So if you have a small car, it's even more important to take care of it right. Change the oil regularly and put in a new Fram oil filter when you're supposed to. A Fram filter doesn't cost much. I do. But the choice is yours. You can pay me now. Or pay me later. I do one thing. I kick this ball through those two poles. Do one thing all the time to get to be great. Like Kentucky Fried Chicken. They don't try to do everything. Just chicken, and no one else does it tender and juicy the Colonel's way. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it right for you. I do kicking right. They do chicken right. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Quickly paced game. Quite in contrast to games three and four, we move along to the seventh inning of game number five. Yankees won, Dodgers nothing, Aurelio Rodriguez, Ron Guidry, and Willie Randolph to face Jerry Royce. Rodriguez 0 for 1. 0 and 1 the count. This is one of the big second guests yesterday, pinch hitting Barry Foot for Aurelio in the ninth inning, striking out on three pitches. Rio had had two hits at that particular time of the ballgame. A lot of second guesses yesterday. Well, as Al said, a second guesser's paradise. I suppose the foot had gone up there and homered. That wasn't one for the art museum yesterday, but people will be talking about that game for a long time. I'm still looking for Mumford. <laughs> Grounded to the left side. Handled by Billy Russell. Oh. One away. One out of the base is empty and Ron Guidry struck out grounded into a force at the plate when the Yankees had the bases loaded in the fourth actually bunting into the force at the plate. All for four in the series. One and oh and as you said last inning Howard. Royce has all command of his pitches. Threw a slow curveball to Rodriguez for a grounder to short, spotting his fastball. He's put it all together. Has a sense of command now. Although that graphic is interesting, it would betoken a weakening in the late innings. One and two on Gidry. Jerry Royce, strikeout number four. Royce has now set down six in a row. Willie Randolph, the batter. He's certainly done his job, giving up that one run because of a Lopes error primarily, and uh, settling down, containing the Yankees, squelching a number of early inning threats. One and oh the count on Randolph. One and one. Again you see Willie a little bit disappointed with that pitch was called a strike. But anytime you're 10 and 4 and you have a 229 ERA on AstroTurf as there is in the National League, an Astro play here, and there you see the high fastball. Not a pitch that Randolph wants to hit. You have to be an outstanding pitcher. The game he pitched against Ryan, the final game of that Astro series, was 
beautifully pitched game. Grounded down to Russell. Ball hitting the side of the mound and Billy throwing him out to retire the side. So Jerry Royce continues to do the job, showing no signs of weakening. Set down seven straight. Middle of the seventh inning, still one nothing Yankees. Guess what I've got in here? What? A piece of the sun. No wonder I can't get a tan. It's Polaroid's new sun camera, a new system that can turn bad light into good pictures. Dear, go ahead, take my picture. You know it'll be dark. Nope. You've never been so sure of an instant picture. Great, but doesn't this cost a lot? No, but wasting film in bad light does. Besides, you never buy flash or extra batteries. The sun looks the same. Where they take the piece from? The other side. You've never been so sure. Bell System Knowledge brings you a way to manage information more productively. Dimension PBX, a programmable electronic communication system for making critical connections more rapidly, increasing profits, controlling costs, saving energy, creating new information management possibilities for an endless variety of businesses. Dimension PBX, from Bell. They'll be with Willie, Mickey, and the Duke. Willie, Mickey, and the Duke. Say it, say it, say it. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Dusty Baker leading off with the Dodgers in the bottom of the seventh inning. Baker, Guerrero, and Yeager facing Ron Guidry, who starts Dusty with a strike. Guidry yielding just two hits, both coming in the first two innings. Baker a chopper foul by Danny Ozark in the third base coaching box, and the count nothing and two. There are any number of Yankee fans here, and the one thing they don't want to see is a chopper going down to third base. <laughs> They're psyched out, even if the Yankees aren't. Yankees one, Dodgers nothing. 0 and 2 on Baker leading off in the bottom of the seventh inning. Pat Swain comes around, down he goes. Nine strikeouts for Guidry. Right there. Both pitches seem to falter in the late innings if one can believe the statistics. And here we see for the ninth strikeout a slider ahead to count 0 and 2. Baker has to chase it. A little bit out of the zone. Excellent slider for this ninth strikeout. Guerrero looks at his strike. 0 and 1. What Gidry is doing, he's establishing his fastball because he's got an excellent one. And it looks to me that he's got his best slider in the last month. So the Dodgers have two pitches to look for. Time had been called by Guerrero. Count. Nothing in one on Pedro. If you talk to hitters that hit off Gidry, the thing that makes the slider so difficult is when he throws his good one, it's just a little bit out of the strike zone. Guerrero at the deep left field. And Season play, but a man with good power hit 12 during the regular season and ties it up here in the seventh. And there you saw a slider that wasn't down and in. And that ball is crushed to left field. And the Dodgers, with a tremendous team spirit, have become the team in this World Series with the right man in the right place at the right time. Look at them. Crowd still going wild. Jaeger the batter. Half swing. The appeal. Get the call at first for a strike. Going one to count. The Dodgers even here in the seventh inning. 1-1 one, one, with one out and the base is empty. Yankee bullpen. 
Fang stirring around. One and one account. One guess who's going to get up in the Yankee bullpen. The goose. This time there can be no question. There he is. Time called. Time had been called. There's no pitch. Time had been called by the third base umpire. There's Guerrero with a home run to tie it up. He Little did. doubt when I left the bat. He did crush that ball. Jerry Royce is the pitcher who seems now to be in total command of the Yankees. But that can change with one swing, too. 1-1 one, one pitch to Yeager. 1-2. There's Royce. Well, two mistakes that Gidry's made today. They've both been on high sliders. Yeager's ball that hit the top of the wall. And the home run by Guerrero. The deep left by. There's more to it than that. Gidry's tired. He's been tiring all year in the late innings. The real storyline here is this Dodger team and their excellence. And Steve Yeager, the ball player who felt betrayed, becomes in his own way maybe the biggest story of all. Did you see Lasorda run out and hug him? Steve coming to battle the 83 times during the regular season. Hit three homers during the regular year. Thomas with a count 0 and 1, taking low and inside, and the count is 1 and 1. So Gidry, who was sailing along, hadn't given up a hit since the second inning, and all of a sudden, Guerrero and Yeager to the pavilion. 1 and 1 the count. to center field. Routine, Winfield. Two down. Tommy Lasorda, his club trying to become the eighth to come back and win a World Series after trailing two games to nothing. Levin, who won it all in 78, and it looked like he had a pretty good lock on it when the team's headed west after Wednesday's second game. The response for Royce. And does he deserve it? Ball one. Dodgers trying to win their first world championship since 1965. One and one. Came up short against Baltimore in 66, against Oakland in 74, against the Yankees in 77 and 78. Trying to turn it around. A strike, and the count is one and two. Steve Yeager. The home run to put him out in front. There's Johnstone, one of yesterday's big heroes. On the left. Probably told him how to do it <laughs> after his two-run home run yesterday. Well, we showed that graphic earlier that vividly depicted how Gidry staggers, comes apart in the last three innings. Royce, a soft humpback liner fielded by Milburn, and the inning is over, but the Dodgers get two runs on two hits. The homers by Guerrero and Yeager. And at the end of seven complete, it's the Dodgers two, the Yankees one, back at Dodger Stadium after this commercial and a word from our local stations. Gamma rays probe. Laser beams scan. Robots perform incredible feats. 
in the creation of Chevrolet Cavalier. Masterminded for remarkable precision, dedication to detail, exactness of fit, and consistent quality. Chevrolet Cavalier. Mastery of mind over matter. Now get bigger savings with even lower 12.9% financing. Monday on That's Incredible, the dream house of the future, a foam home. American Airlines thinks a business traveler has no business waiting in line. After line, after line. That's why American gives you only one check-in line where you can get boarding passes for your entire trip instead of extra lines. Even pre-reserved seating up to 11 months in advance instead of waiting in more lines. So what are you waiting for? When baseball made news with Fernando Valenzuela's spectacular debut, Pete Rose's record hit, and its longest strike, 16 million readers were part of it in Sports Illustrated. When Watson was masterful, McEnroe magnificent, and Sugar Ray superfine, 16 million readers were part of it in Sports Illustrated. And now, as the Yankees and Dodgers battle in this year's World Series, 16 million readers will be part of the news and excitement in Sports Illustrated. You can be part of it, too. Reader on Tourette Syndrome, Thursday at 6. And a very happy Mike Connors right now. A 2-1 Dodger lead, but the series tonight, the new FBI series, today's FBI, Mike, very happy about it. Yes, I hope there's as many people watching that show tonight as they're watching this series. Premiering tonight on ABC, what about some of the other stars uh, in the series? Well, there's talented uh, Richard Hill, Carol Potter, uh, just a minute, please. Carol Potter and uh, Harold Sylvester, all fine talent. Oh. Back to you, Al. All right, you. And in the eighth inning, it's Milburn grounding to say on the first pitch, one away. One out. Base is empty. Well, we've got a pretty good lead in for Mr. Connors, who show will be on after game five of the World Series in the Eastern and Central time zones and eight o'clock on the West Coast. Now remember all season long the Yankees trailing in the late innings have not been able to rescue a single game even though they won 55 of 56 when they were leading going into the late innings. Let's see if now when it's more important than it's ever been all year long they can show some resiliency. But this pitcher has been commanding. He's the one who gained in strength. Jerry Royce has set down the last eight straight, 11 of the last 12. Winfield. One and another count. Winfield, the last man to reach off Royce when Dave picked up his first hit in the series. A single to left in the fifth inning. He's one for 17. One out, bases at the 2 1. Los Angeles in the eighth. One and one. On deck, Reggie Jackson. Again, a good point is that Royce cannot lose until he gets a man on. Winfield is the tying run, not the winning run. You don't want to be so careful that you walk him and have the next guy come up and hit the two run home run. Yeah. One and two, the count. Royce has walked three, one of those intentionally. Struck out four. Appears to be very much in command. One and two the count. What a difference three days can make. We got to Los Angeles reading the media. It's a chicken team. They were dead. Some chicken team, these Dodgers. Two and two. Winfield leaning out over the plate. And bending back, pitched really not that close. Oh, he wants the ball out over the plate, and Royce, there you see that sailing fastball in on him. Winfield, who's loved this park in his years with San Diego. Two and two. Swung at Royce's pitch, not his pitch. And here you see a high fastball sailing out of the strike zone. Not a good pitch to handle for Winfield. Strike three. 
Reggie Jackson. Doubled, struck out, hit into a double play. On one. Crowd roaring with each delivery now. You know, Reggie wants to try to get a fastball in the middle of the plate that he can drive. You see, saw yesterday. And there you see that Ethan Royce has only allowed one home run all year to a left-handed batter, but Reggie can hit left-handed. We proved that yesterday off Steve Howe. The only left-handed to homer off Royce this season was Joe Morgan of the San Francisco Giants. One and one to count. Now here, you, as a pitcher, you don't want to overthrow. When you start overthrowing, you kind of tense up your wrist, and you don't have the good movement on the ball. The last thing Royce wants to do is throw a nothing fastball in the center of the plate like a, to a guy like Jackson. Reggie goes the other way. Easy play for Dusty Baker. The Yankees are gone in the eighth. Three up, three down through seven and a half. It's the Dodgers two, the Yankees one in game five. I've had to write some tough things about some tough guys. But there's one guy I can't write anything bad about. His unique brand of baseball has made him a living legend. So have his commercials. They got me to try his favorite beer, light beer from Miller. Light's less filling, and it really tastes great. So I bought this light for that renowned, yet humble man, Art Thrunger. Cheer up, Billy. One day you'll be famous just like me. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. I checked your car, and it needs new brakes. I recommend the kind that chirp like a cricket. Chirp, Mr. Goodrich? <laughs> right. Genuine GM replacement disc brake pads. When they need replacing, they warn you with a chirp. How, Mr. Goodrich? With this built-in wear-sensing signal. <laughs> brakes with a chirp! Keep that great GM feeling. Sounds good! With genuine GM parts. Marcus, I see a <coughs> whisker. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. I trot. Next time, Jose, give it the pivot. The Gillette Atro razor pivots to continually adjust and hug every curve, contour, and angle. No other razor shaves closer and more comfortably than Atro. I give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Atro. Give it the pivot with Gillette Atro. Americans are mega dosing on vitamins. As the miles accumulate, you want to slow down the mileage. What are the benefits? Are there dangers? Monday, watch ABC's World News tonight. For the Yankees, these changes, Lou Pinella goes from left over to right. Jerry Mumphrey is indeed alive and well, and there he is. A day late, but he's back in center field. And Dave Winfield moves over to left. And the Yankees make a change as the goose comes out of the bullpen to try to keep the Dodgers in check in the eighth inning. Gossage to face Lopes, Russell, and Garvey. 2-1 Los Angeles. He'd be too little, too late. The use of Gossage. Davey Lopes, 0 for 3. One to go. And the Yankees come up in the top of the ninth inning. Watson, Pinella, and Sorrell. Two and the count. I think Gossage may have a problem. He hasn't pitched in four days. So we saw him in, possible. We saw him in New York. Uh, he had five days off. Struggled really both games until he got in the groove in the last inning. And out of the groove right here. Three and the count on Davey Lowe. Might very well have rusted out. Three and one. Because in spite of how hard he throws, he is a control pitcher. When he's on, he can throw the ball 95 miles per hour on the corner. Three and two. That last pitch was clocked at 92. That was 94 miles per hour, that last one. And point is, Gossage is no longer the key to is no longer the key to this game. Jerry Royce is the key. Ball four. Davey Lopes draws a walk. 
And Bill Russell coming up. What a shot as you look down upon Dodger Stadium from the Goodyear Blip. Of course, Howard, I think in all fairness to, to Bob Lemon, Gidry started off last inning striking Baker out, even though he has had a very tough time at the plate. I would think that after Guerrero hit a home run, you might want to bring Gossage in, but it's kind of hard to anticipate things. Well, I like haven't that. criticized Lemon. He's had a very difficult time of it. I haven't criticized him today. Russell punting. Watson will make the catch, and Lopes is alert enough to get back to first base. I was not saying that. I just think it illustrates how difficult a major league manager's job is. And a lot of times, I'm supposed if Gidry had stayed in, somehow weathered the seventh inning, you wouldn't have people second guessing. Things add up, Jim, as we said yesterday. The blown opportunities in the early innings, the blown opportunities of the Yankees today in the early innings. But the overriding people here today in the long run have been Jerry Royce and Steve Yeager, along with Guerrero. And this team, there's a reason for statistics in baseball. They foretell things. Steve Garvey <laughs> popping it up. Shallow right field. Lou Pinella coming on. Two guys. This Dodger team so terribly underrated by so many. They may be in the process of doing exactly what they did against Houston. Down two to nothing in games they won three in a row. This team was much too lightly regarded by many too many people. Part of the reason being that the Dodgers like a couple of other clubs that were first half winners including the Yankees did not perform particularly well in the second half of the season. Close play. Lopes getting back. When you see Lopes diving back in. Eight straight stolen bases in postseason play. Pretty good time to run. Take a shot to get a guy second base. Maybe pick up another run. Make it a little bit easier for Royce. Say hitting a chopper foul. Ouch. 0 and 1. They've set new all-time stadium records here in attendance the last two days, 56,000 plus on each occasion. Needless to say, a sellout again today. He ought to be awfully proud of this ball club. As Howard said, come back and back and back. Don't discount Tommy Lasorda either. They cheered him today. He's taken a lot of garbage this year and last year. But he's held together and he has managed superbly well in this series. Oh, one pitch. Oh. Look out. Woo. Right off the helmet. Ron Say. You saw him blinking and his eyes open now as a 94 mile an hour fastball. Crunches into the helmet of Ron Say. And the crowd, as you can hear, getting all over Gossett. Ron had no chance with really it to get out of the way of that pitch. Well, it looked like the ball hit him in the batting helmet. Helmet going Thank flying off. Thank if it did. One can understand the passions of the crowd in a case like this, but they must understand there's no way in the world Gossage threw at mm. Ron Say. Right off the helmet. Yep. Not in that situation. Thank heaven for helmets. Mm. Right on the corner of the helmet. And you know it took a lot of years for the helmet to be brought into use as we look at Ron and who seems to be talking. What a terrible terrible thing to happen. Helmets came finally came into vogue in the big leagues as a result of the beaning of Don Zimmer when he almost died having been beamed down at St. Paul and then subsequently as a Dodger and a pitch thrown by Jeffco. I remember once in Brooklyn when Ducky Wucky Medwick then a member of the Dodgers was beamed by a right hander named Bobby Bowman and 
Larry McPhail then running. The Dodgers threaten to go into criminal court. Thank heavens. Look at Ron. He's up. So say, fortunately able to walk off with a little bit of assistance. Lasorda, of course, does not take any chances here. Sending in a pinch runner and a great ovation for a man who's played a key role in the resurgence of the Dodgers over the weekend here. And they say the parts again the booing begins for Gossage. They're really on him now. Mm. What a frightening sight and the sound too. Fortunately you can hear it hit plastic. Knowing that it indeed got the helmet at least the brunt of the force did. And they'll take Say back to the trainer's room. Meanwhile, Kenny Landro comes out to pinch run for Say at first base. It's remarkable that Ron was able to talk, apparently keep his wits together, because such a blow had to have had a concussive effect. With two down, Landro, the pinch runner at first, Davy Lopes, now at second, and Dusty Baker at the plate. Fouling it straight back. 0 and 1. And ironically, now each starting third baseman has been injured in this series. Of course, a damaged thumb is one thing. The frightening sight we have just seen and nothing. Baker checking his swing and fouling it off. No balls and two strikes on Dusty. Don't think the next batter, after having seen what happened to Say, isn't affected as he watches Gossage wind up and throw what can become a dangerous instrumentality. What is? Baker grounding a foul. 0 and 2. Dodgers on top, 2 to 1. Again now, when the Yankees come up in the ninth, Watson, Panella, Cerrone. Five, six, and seven hitters. The Dodgers will probably move Daryl Thomas into play third base in the ninth inning and keep Landro in the game in center. Still 0 2. Lopes in second. Christy Baker having some good swings. called something going on back of the plate the ball is stuck in the screen is what the problem is so one of the ball boys will climb up there and dislodge it Yankees with a run in the second inning Royce has pitched beautifully today LA back to back homers in the seventh by Guerrero and Yeager that's the difference 0-2 pitch breaking ball fouled away like the four days has hurt Gossage. Obviously while the normal hitting say in the head mm -hmm. it seems like all his pitches are on the inside part of the plate. Runners are going. The pitch is inside and the throw is not in time. It's dropped by Rodriguez. <laughs> Davey Lopes running on his own and getting a great jump. Landro started late. He was watching Davey and it's a double steal. Well, we saw Lopes yesterday steal second and steal third. Ninth straight time he stole. Stolen a base in postseason games. And what this does, a base hit will score two runs and make Jerry Royce's job a lot easier. The owner isn't happy. You can understand that. He's become bigger than his ball players in a publicity sense. One, two, pick. It foul. It's interesting, Howard. Tremendous contrast in managers. You've got the effusive, ebullient Lasorda and the plastic, stoical Lemon. 
And a tremendous contrast in the owners with Steinbrenner. The converse. All, all over the mm -hmm. papers and Peter O'Malley, who just eschews publicity. And Baker stays alive. He's fighting Gossage. He's being exhorted, as you can see, by Lasorda. Lemon has a kind of fix on life. You lose a child in life, and your world doesn't turn on a ball game. Baker hits a breaking pitch, foul, deep down the line, well back out of play. So Dusty hanging right in with a count one and two. Jerry Royce will go to the mound in the ninth inning. And as a pitcher, I know what he wants. He wants a three-run cushion instead of a one-run cushion. Bouncing ball to third. Rodriguez has to back up. He's got a strong arm and is able to gun him down. So the inning is over. They get all over Gossage as he comes back to the dugout. The Dodgers leave a couple in the eighth and will go to the ninth. There are the men do up in game five. It's the Dodgers two and the Yankees one. Trust the leader in technology to forge a new legend. Seiko LaSalle. Trust Seiko to fuse slim elegance and peerless performance. New Seiko LaSalle. Trust Seiko to create timepieces destined for a place among the world's great possessions. Seiko LaSalle. Miracles of slimness. Marvels of technology. No wonder people trust Seiko more than any other watch. Seiko at your authorized dealer. Ah, new car. Chevy Chevette. Must have cost a fortune for the fancy wheels and white striped tires. Standard, father. Radio. Reclining seats <laughs> on your salary. Standard, father. Along with front disc brakes and radio tires. And these fancy stripes? $89 extra. And why would you spend $89 on stripes? The devil made me do it. Oh, I see. <laughs> makes good things. <laughs> the devil, you say? This is Radiator Rust. It's building up after just 10,000 miles on weak, neglected antifreeze. Now look at a radiator protected with new, improved Prestone 2, same 10,000 miles. Quite a difference. Introducing the new silicone silicate formula Prestone to lock out rust and corrosion in all metals. Now it's even stronger for better aluminum protection. New, improved Prestone 2, the best seller just got better. No wonder we're number one. For the Dodgers, as speculated, Daryl Thomas at third base. Kenny Landro stays in center field as we go to the ninth. Al Michaels along with Howard Cosell, Jim Palmer. I want to thank our statistician in the booth, Alan Roth. Steve Hurt doing a great job with the graphics. As the Dodgers take a 2-1 advantage into the ninth inning. Bob Watson batting off Royce's first offering. As you look at Terry Royce, Jerry's wife, looking for three more outs. Watson 0 for 2 plus a walk. 1 and 1. One one pitch. Watson lifting it foul. Dodger bullpen. Busy. Back of the left-hander Royce. Here in the ninth inning, the right-hander is yesterday's starter, Bob Welch. The lefty is Terry Forster. Still one and two. Now you have to look ahead, assuming Royce can survive, and wonder and hope that Ron Say will be able to play on Tuesday. Because series is a long way from over. Different in Yankee Stadium. Grounded to short. Russell stays with an erratic pop and gets him. Run away. <laughs> Terry Royce with a sigh of relief as Lou Pinella comes to the plate. We are, by the way, checking on the condition of Ron Say, who is back in the trainer's room. Game six coming up on Tuesday. There are the probables. Tommy John will pitch on two days rest against Bert Hooten. Eight o'clock Eastern time at Yankee Stadium. Well, 
what Royce has done is what he's done for the last four or five innings. He's gotten ahead of the hitters. He got right ahead of Watson, made him chase a couple of bad pitches, made a good one on the inside part of the plate. And the ball was hit right at Russell for the out. The interesting thing about this sport is you can sense things. You get a feeling. You could sense Royce coming on. You couldn't sense what happened to Gidry unless you began with the Guerrero home run and took into the light of the situation the whole Gidry background of faltering in the late innings. Pinella bouncing ball toward the middle and that's a base hit. So the Yankees get the time run on the first hit off Royce since Winfield single in the fifth inning. Jerry had set down 11 straight. So Pinella at first base. Cerrone will be the hitter. Lou looking over into the dugout as if he expects a pinch runner to come out. We'll probably and see Bobby Brown. That will be the case. That's why time is out here. And it will be Bobby Brown who emerges from the Yankee dugout as the tying run. The Yankees with a run in the second inning, the Dodgers with two in the seventh. Back to back homers by Guerrero and Yeager. Sarone lifting it to center field. Landro there. Two down. Interesting. Swung on the first pitch again. Three out of four times, every time with men on base. The one time he waited, he hit a line shot. You just saw Steinbrenner registered disgust. He sent a line shot to left field. He told you Sarone will be back next year. Well, no, the, the reason that we're on. And here we see really a Rodriguez. They hit for him yesterday with Barry Foote. With one out of the ninth inning, the crowd standing is one. Rodriguez goes after the first pitch and hits it off the foot of the third base umpire foul. Off Nick Pelosi's foot. Joe out the belly is going to argue it was a fair ball, and Pelosi saying, uh-uh, I'm standing in foul territory. I don't I think you'll see the foul line, and maybe he wasn't. Here comes Lemon. And here's a hot shot by Rodriguez. Daryl Thomas is on the line as he should be. And there you can see that's a foul ball. Foul ball. Five round, all the way, no doubt. And going back to Cerrone, Cerrone is a first ball fastball hitter. I think you could second guess the fact that he has swung at four pitches to hit. But basically that's the way he hits. And Royce has been able to get him out on some good pitches early in the count. Oh and one. Rodriguez fouling it away, and the count is 0-2. Again, Jerry Royce has gotten ahead of the hitter. Has a number of options now. You can throw him that slow curveball. He can come in. This is probably the best place to go, or he can go away with that fastball. As one, they stand at Dodger Stadium. The home team has won every game thus far in the World Series. The Dodgers trying to keep that streak intact. Two out, no balls, two strikes on Rodriguez. And the Dodgers lead it three games to two.
Let's go. Where? Sears said that it sold them up for an hour. An hour's up. Since when does an hour mean 60 minutes? Confidence, Karen. Confidence. Now Sears will install the muzzler muffler for $24.99 within 60 minutes of your authorization or the muzzler labor charge is free. Ah, Mr. Carlson, 60 minutes on the nose. Well, I never doubted it for a second. For great value and fast service, you can count on Sears. Premiering tonight at 8, a two-hour special of a hot new series, Today's FBI. No bank or savings and loan can pay you more interest or save you more taxes on a new one-year tax saver certificate than Wells Fargo. And none offers you the financial counsel of your own Wells Fargo personal banker. Maximum tax benefit, maximum interest. A personal banker to help you make the most of both. Only Wells Fargo delivers it all. Lots of companies will move your air cargo. There are big ones and small ones, and they drive around picking up and delivering. But guess who most of them use to ship? Flying Tigers. We carry cargo for most air cargo companies, so we're probably already shipping yours. Call us first, and your cargo doesn't have to be given to anyone else. We can pick it up, fly it, and deliver it all ourselves. Flying Tigers! Call us in the first place. X-rated TV, starting Wednesday at 11. Now the hitting heroes today for the Dodgers, Pedro Guerrero on an 0-1 pitch to tie it at 1-1. What did you hit, Pedro? Well, I think it was a slider. You know, he was throwing the, the, that pitch all day, but uh, that one, I, I guess, didn't break too good, so I hit again. You know, it looked like it was awfully tough seeing today, though. Well, it was tough to see uh, when, the, when the game first started, but uh, then later on, you know, I, I can see better. What about you, uh, Steve? What is, what is it about postseason play with you? You hit a home run the other day, the first time ever to right field in Yankee Stadium, and then today the big one off Gossage on a one, rather Gidry on a one-two pitch. No doubt about it in left field. Well, you know, you can, I just seem to excel, I guess, in postseason play, and I enjoy it because it's what we, we fight for from the time we go to spring training until the end of the season. It's again, like Lasorda says, the fall classic. A lot of clubs, a lot of people count us out all year long. We, we weren't supposed to beat the Astros. We weren't supposed to meet Montreal. We did. We're together. And uh, we lost the first two in New York. We come back and won three in a row. We're going back to New York and trying to win one out of two there. Great series here. Back to you, Al Michaels. All right. Thank you, you. What a weekend in Los Angeles. Don't forget tonight coming up, today's FBI beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. You'll see it next. Final score, 2-1 to one, Los Angeles. Picking and choosing the right investments requires very careful handling. One wrong move can easily damage the best laid plans. At Merrill Lynch, we know that size and strength can be very valuable. But it is our sensitivity to your investment goals and agility in helping you reach them that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. Here's two good friends. Come on, guys, just two more floors. You know, we heard apartments were hard to find. But the roof? Well, the apartment's on the third floor, but tonight. All day. Yeah, well, you guys have been traveling all day, so we thought we'd pull out all the stops. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Here's to your exterior decorator. Let it be low and brown. <laughs> If there has ever been a more, a more emotional ball game uh, pitched here at Dodger Stadium, I can't remember when. It's been a long time. Outstanding job by Jerry Royce today, 2-1 to one Dodgers. I agree with everything you say, Bob. Uh, boy, that was fun. Jerry, these fans pump you up all day long? Well, they've been, they've been pumping us up all series long, all season long. you got to give them credit. They come out here in large numbers, and it makes all the difference in the world. But uh, I've been waiting 15, 20, 25 years ever since you were playing. <laughs> Jerry, what, what's the difference in your performance uh, the other game you pitched to today? Well, I kept the ball down most of the day today. I went predominantly fastballs, so maybe three or four curveballs. And uh, the other game in New York, I was throwing probably too many curveballs, getting the ball up, and I just didn't pitch my kind of game. Today, I did. Solid game. Back to you, Al. All right, Yuke, again, the final score. The Dodgers, two, and the Yankees, one. The Dodgers leading in the series, three games to two. Al Michaels, Howard Cosell, Jim Palmer, so long from Los Angeles with a reminder to join us tomorrow night for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The Oilers taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
and Tuesday night, Game 6 of the 1981 World Series. Also premiering tonight, today's FBI. Coming up next in the Eastern and Central regions and at 8 p.m. here on the West Coast. Blip provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what Friendly Skies are all about. Today's game has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Catch a new spirit of action and adventure. Who are you? It's Lee Majors as Hollywood's hottest stuntman. Sometimes I'm Robert Redford. The Fall Guy, a special two-hour premiere, Wednesday. Here on ABC. Recently, Road & Track chose its 10 best cars for the 80s. Three of the 10 cars were the Porsche 928, Best Exotic Sports GT, the Audi Coupe, Best Sports Coupe, and the Audi 5000 Turbo, best family sedan. See these road and track winners and the other great Porsches and Audis at your Southern California Porsche Audi dealer now. Bank of America announces a new investment opportunity, tax-free plus. My wife and I can get up to $2,000 interest, tax-free. Plus all the safety of California's largest bank. Plus all the convenience, too. Plus, the money in my account can help me get checking free of monthly charges. With Bank of America's one-year time deposit, you get tax-free income, plus a lot more. Tax-free plus at Bank of America. Stay with Channel 7 and be an eyewitness to history. Stadium in Los Angeles. The final score right there, two to one. The Dodgers winning it. The Yankees winning games one and two. The Dodgers with three one-run victories over the weekend here. So in all five games, the home team has prevailed. And the Dodgers, in quest of their first world championship since 1965, need one more to pick it up. The home run here by Pedro Guerrero coming in the seventh inning off Ron Guidry, who had been sailing along till then. Guerrero drilling it deep into the bleachers in left field to tie the game. And that, of course, was followed by the home run off the bat of Steve Yeager right here. And here you see a fastball in the middle of the plate. Yeager, a fastball hitter, hits it deep to left. Two to one, Dodgers. And that's the way it wound up with Jerry Royce going all the way. One could see Royce take command in this ball game from the middle innings on. One could see him getting stronger and stronger, and the fans are sitting here almost reverently. Maybe they've got it a little bit out of whack in its importance in the fullness of life, but it's a very big part of their lives, and they still find it a subject to rejoice over. They have beaten the Yankees three in a row, and they have shown in every case the ability to come back. And the Yankees have shown in every case the inability to capitalize upon the opportunities presented. Today was no exception. Reviewing the scorecard, top of the second, they got a run in, they had two men on base, nobody out. Hitting at the first pitch, Cerrone grounded to the shortstop, double play. In the third inning, the Yankees had two men on base, only one out. Once again, Winfield failed, and then Reggie struck out. In the fourth inning, they actually had men on second and third, no one out. Cerrone failed to score the runner. Then an intentional walk filled the bases. Gidry essayed the bunt, force at home. In other words, Royce was equal to the occasion. The Yankees were not. We've had one very frightening incident today, the unfortunate and completely accidental beaning of Dodger third baseman Ron Say. Word has come to us that he has been taken to the hospital. He walked off the field under his own power, superficially appeared to be all right, but he's in the hospital for an appropriate checkup. 
And let's give you a look at that run say play again. The pitch at 95 miles per hour sailing in toward Ron and actually the force of it knocking the helmet off his head. Thank heavens it hit the corner of the helmet. In the old days, as we pointed out, before the days of helmets, heaven knows, once Carl Mays killed a batter with a submarine pitch. But it's okay now. I think Bob Yuka is down there ready to pick up. Robert Yuka, take over. Thank you, Howard. And again with Steve Yeager. And Steve and I just talking here a moment ago about the pitch that hit Say. And Steve, uh, you were about one of the first people there, and uh, I guess you had a pretty good look at what happened uh, and the uh, extent of the injury, if there is one. Well, you know, Bobby, I, I don't know if there's any injuries. There was no blood or anything, and that was one thing that Ronnie had, had said was everything intact. And the trainer said, yeah, it's fine. And Ronnie had complained of a little bit of numbness on the uh, left side where the ball hit him. And actually, as hard as uh, Gossie's throws, it's going to be a little numb back there and they're going back and they're going to take him to the hospital and take some precautionary x-rays and I, I just hope that it's just a little little headache he has for tonight and tomorrow and getting back in that lineup on Tuesday because he's a it's a big clog he's a, he's a big wheel in our, in our our machine you might say and the uh, the month that he was out with the broken hand we certainly missed him we hope that uh, he's back in there Tuesday night. Steve let's talk about catching today uh, Royce and the same holds true for Gidry with Ron Cerrone there's so much talk about how tough it is to see as a hitter here in Dodger Stadium it's also tough to see catching sometimes I noticed a couple of times pitches from Royce that uh, you apparently didn't see that well well it is it's very difficult catching a left handed pitcher in the daylight here in, in Dodger Stadium at nighttime it's all right but it seems like all the pitches come out of the right field uh, pavilion they're very difficult to see if, as far as hitting wise especially if they're they're down in the strike zone and a little off speed pitches Jerry's ball moves so uh, so much that one minute it'll sink and another minute it'll it'll sail and the only thing I was trying to do was stay on one knee keep him down in the strike zone because in New York he was up Watson hurt him with a high fastball and I was just want to make sure he kept him down and took his time and did mechanical wise right Steve congratulations on a fine game and a big win for the Dodgers back upstairs Dal Michaels all right you and while we have a moment Howard we can check out the NFL okay today. the NFL scores today Al Cleveland over Baltimore by 14 superb day for Brian Seif New Orleans upset Cincinnati tremendous surprise great day for George Rogers Buffalo out fought Denver nine to seven and you saw the way they won it Detroit by four over Green Bay and a good day for Eric Hippel Dallas it's Miami 28 to 27 a great day for white Minnesota upset by St. Louis we move ahead Washington defeated New England by two points the Redskins coming on and the Giants may be the surprise team in football beating the powerful Falcons by three in overtime and the Seattle Seahawks finally win a game and look at that the Otis Brown recently acquired Philadelphia remains the constant team in the league. Kansas City overtaking a huge Oakland 17 point lead now leading the apparently former Super Bowl champion San Francisco what a job Walsh is doing beating the Rams by three. And there it is again the Dodgers two, the Yankees one Royce over Guidry Guerrero and Yeager consecutive home runs. Bottom of the seventh, it came after Baker had led off the inning by striking out at a time when Guidry seemed invincible. Game six, Tuesday, New York, Wednesday, Tuesday. Putin against Tommy John. So long from Dodger Stadium.